Hi, David Odell here with Odell Complete Concrete. Welcome back to part four of this particular project. Three was the setup and how we got to this point. Two was the entire back patio. And one was the setup for the back patio. Anyway, before we get into this particular project, uh, make sure you subscribe, like, comment, and share. And hit the notifications so you get notified on my next upload so you won't miss any of these magnificent jobs. So there's the patio that we poured. Diamond cut, 5 foot, with the 1 foot band. Now we've got the expansion foam around the entire house because we're doing both side yards here. And we've already done the patio. So that foam goes all the way around the entire house. The drain line, which you can see go in in the previous part to this series, and that goes all the way to back the sidewalk. All the way around the house, it makes a complete U, both sides of the house. We just boxed out around the gas line, give it some play there. That, that foam you notice was higher than the existing concrete. That's because they had a big swell in it. And that future drive was going to come out, so we can match the top of that. We won't have a swell in it anymore. We're using associated ready mix here. I added some fiber mesh into the truck when it arrived. This is a 3000 PSI. These drains that we have in here are laid out really easily off of each col column and they're at 12 feet and we can we can put the joint off of the column right through, through the center of drain that's a three foot wide wood bowl flow which fits perfectly in the side yard There's the drain. You could just see how it passed over that drain. It was almost completely buried. But the nice thing about the drains being at the columns, you always know where they're at. So we came down this pretty early just to shape it up. Double check it. That's what I'm carrying. I've got the level with me right there. I'm trying to um, double check the drainage as I go through. Move a little concrete around if need be. The nice thing about putting the um, joints on the actual drain in this case, you can actually, when we come back here to clean it up the next day, we can run a saw cut really deep in the joint beneath the grate in the drain and uh, the water, in other words, the water won't sit in the um, joint ever because it's going to go beneath the cap into the upright of the actual drain. Which I always like to do because I don't like to see standing water in joints. It discolors it, it stains it, um, you know, and you get the algae, the dirt. So if you can get water, you know, standing water out of there quickly, you won't have those issues. We're getting pretty close to the broom here. And that particular broom is 50% nylon and 50% horsehair. Beautiful combination. The nylon, what it does is it keeps the horsehair from laying down. Like if you look at a mane on a horse, it always likes to lay to one side. Well, a broom does the same thing if it's 100% horsehair. So the nylon keeps it from doing that. Here's the kid. The kids came out. We're doing some hand prints. Oldest to youngest is the order we went here. I 
a little touch up in between the hand prints. Now I can't broom over that hand print or trowel on that area again. So I'll just be careful and uh, work around it. Now we're coming down the other side of the house. That other box out you see there on the ground, that's for the uh, drip line of the um, AC and the overflow for uh, the water the water heater. We could have piped those into the drain, I suppose. That's always an option. Wow, the pole almost knocked the camera down right there. That was close. Which has happened more than once. That's why I recommend getting the warranty if you're going to be doing this. Get the uh, you know damage warranty. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. And this was the final part of this particular series and it worked out beautiful.